And you said you wanted to film a video. Oh, just a minute. Yes, yes, I guess we were supposed to film a video today. Uh, what did you want to film this one on? Uh, how about the fledgling pigeons? Okay, yep, okay. So we'll get this set up. I'll put a little, uh, put a little, blow this down. Nobody wanted the dang toilet paper. What are we even going to do with all this stuff? Okay, right, just clean all this off real quick. Where is that possum, dude? I'm gonna freaking out. People are gonna be, people are gonna be upset. If we can't find the possum, everyone's gonna say, where's Poppy? You know? And, and also, I just, I hope that Kimchi didn't eat her. That would be awful. Kimchi, you didn't do it. She is looking really fat. This is what I do with Kimchi and all the animals. I'm gonna let her sniff. Because she's curious. You know, just because she's a cat doesn't mean she's gonna eat them. Now, obviously, a lot of you guys are probably wondering, like, hey, why do you have a dang Bengal cat in your house with about 50 little, little chicks and pigeons and especially little fledgling ones that we have in there? Thing is, Kimchi's never seen any animals like that. Most house cats are kept in the house all the time and they don't get to see anything like that. Kimchi's actually really great with our chickens outside too. And, um, and she likes to smell, she likes to see them. She's never once tried to bite them. Sometimes she'll try to grab them like they're toys, as you can see. She likes to poke them. But what I like to do is just shake her hand and then give her a pat on the butt and say, get on out of here and go make some babies. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Urban Rescue Ranch. And today our creature feature, our second one ever, last week it was possums and this week it is pigeons. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about feral pigeons, um, what their deal is, some facts about them, and then what to do if you find one that's been abandoned that you need to take care of. There's a little nugget. What are you doing out of there, nugget? Get back in there. Anyways, so today we're just gonna go into a little bit of facts about them. I'm gonna show you how to take care of adults. And then we also have, excuse me, Poppy. We also have a couple of fledglings for you guys. Go ahead and come over here, take a look. This is where we've been keeping the pigeons as they grow up. Uh, this one's almost, this one's about 80 to 90% of the way there. Uh, that one's name is Big Boy, and the one on my shoulder's name is Jewel. Both of them were named by the folks on our Tiki Talkie. And then these are our spy cameras, Sony and Canon. Now Sony and Canon are beautiful, wonderful little guys. Hey, 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 come on. You don't gotta be doing that. And these are beautiful, wonderful little guys. They actually think that I'm their mother. So. Uh, pigeons can make amazing, amazing pets depending on when you bring them in uh, and when you rescue them. Now, these little guys were brought in when they were just barely fledged. They didn't even have like any feathers at all on their wings. And now they're finally starting to fledge out. Um, and I'm going to show you what to do first to feed those little guys. I'm going to let uh, Big Boy just kind of walk around a little bit. And I'm going to show you first what the feed is. So, right here. This is chick starter. This is basically what the chicks, the ducks, everything else eats is poultry starter. You want it to be mixed with some warm water and you want it to be the consistency of, uh, people say applesauce. Uh, I like it to just be a little bit more runny than that just because it's really hard to get it in the, um, ooh, little, and this can be a bit messy. It's hard to get it inside the syringe if it's applesauce, depending on how big your syringe is. So this is what I do. I fill it up like this and I take their beaks and then I gently move it to the side, stick this in there, and you make sure that it's in the back and it's not going into the throat, and then I push it in, okay? And then after you do that, it goes into what's called the crop. And the crop is a little fleshy sack area right here on their chest, and it stays there for a bit and before slowly moving into the stomach. So now we're gonna give one to Cannon, okay? So I, tell you, I like to stick it at the top. One issue that I always run into is that the, the end will get clogged. Don't, don't go in there. The end will get clogged with, the end will get clogged with other bigger chunks of chick starter. What you can do to combat that is really just mix it in really well, get really warm water, um, and then do the same thing. So I like to open their mouth up like this, give you a good angle, and then boop. Went straight in there, and that doesn't hurt them at all. Uh, the main thing is just make sure that it's not going into their lungs. I've never had that issue personally, um, but I know that that's something that people have to worry about, and that's something that people say online is an issue. 
Uh, you hanging in there, Poppy? Poppy's having fun. So there's kimchi. Now, before you guys freak out and say, hey, how dare you let your cat get that close to a pigeon or a chick or a young possum or anything like that. Kimchi is a Bengal cat. And although she's a cat and it's in her nature to want to eat these kind of animals and mess with them, oop, um, I've never had an issue with her before. But one thing that can trigger kimchi to do that is if one of the animals tries to run away or escape, she'll try and chase after them. So just for the sake of safety, what I'll do is pick up Big Boy and put him on my other shoulder. Oh. See what I mean? She'll hop up and go after him when she flies away, not because she's hungry and not because she wants to eat him, simply because it's just a predator-prey instinctual chase thing. Okay, so I'll show you guys just two more times to show you. You put it in the mouth, move their beaks to the side, doesn't hurt them in any way. At this age, their beaks are a lot more soft and rubbery, a bit more malleable. I do the same thing. Now, you're noticing this is mostly water. And this is the issue I run into. I'm not able to get as much of the actual chick starter as I'd like. But what's great is at this age, you can actually grab chick starter. And uh, here, let me get a pinch of it. And I'll show you what I do. When you want them to start weaning, so when you st want them to start getting off of like the mommy food, the vomit, one thing I'll do is I'll just get a little bit of chick starter. And this is another thing you have to worry about because you don't want it to go into their lungs. Um, but you can put little peas or pellets like this right into their mouth. All right, you don't want to get in their eyes, you don't want to get in their ears, you got to be careful when you're doing this, but it's a really great step to get them on the path towards weaning. And um, they obviously eat that. Once it goes in their mouth, they get the gist of it. And then what I like to do is I like to kind of, uh, like a mama bird would, push their head in towards where the food is. Um, because that's really the most effective and the only way to teach them how to do that. So I'll show you the difference between the beaks for each of these. So with a young one like this, it's a bit more malleable. No, kimchi. No. She's learning. It's a bit more malleable. You can move it around. You can bend it a little bit even, um, especially when they're younger. With one this uh, mature, this is an older pigeon. And uh, you can't really do that as much. At this point, their beaks start to become a little bit harder, like, like bone. Um, so it's a bit easier. See, even this. A lot of people would freak out and say, hey, why the heck are you letting your cat get anywhere near that? Kimchi has never once tried to eat or hurt any of our little animals, um, which is amazing. In fact, we've had more issues with our rabbits messing with the other animals than we have with any of the cats. Now, I'm not saying you should do this with your cat at home. Might be a totally different story. Never let them get this close to little animals. But what's wonderful about this whole thing is that when these guys grow up, they're going to get to be friends with kimchi, and you guys are going to get to watch and see um, how they establish and maintain a relationship together as well. Uh, the same thing goes for, for bunnies. Typically, cats will eat baby bunnies. Okay, so now that I've shown you guys how you can feed them and take care of them at basically any age in their early process of life. So this is probably about two weeks or a week and a half. This is probably about three weeks. And then this is about four. So this one's almost ready to go. So basically, these are incredible, incredible animals. The reason why they are so friendly, even this one that's a bit older, and even if we had just grabbed a feral pigeon off the street and grabbed it and just played with it for a while, it would just immediately become friendly. And I've shown you guys that in the TikToks. But the reason for that is because they were the oldest domesticated bird. Some people believe up to 10,000 years ago was the first time people started domesticating pigeons. Most people believe it's 5,000, but that's still incredible. These little guys have been living in proximity, at the very least, to humans for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And because of that, they're really comfortable with us. Even this one that, uh, that totally, you know, I haven't formed any kind of bond with, haven't spent any special amount of time with, you know, it doesn't take very long for me to just be able to put it on my head and, and let it calm down. And the same thing happens with wild pigeons as well. We've had plenty of videos where we show you guys all kinds of fun skits and stuff with the pigeons that we rescue and rehome. So it doesn't take very long to tame even an adult pigeon 
Another fun fact about pigeons is that they can fly up to 6,000 feet high and up to 77 and sometimes even 95 miles per hour. So there are some incredible, incredible birds and they need to be able to do that because the main predator for pigeons is a peregrine falcon or just any kind of hawk or falcon. And uh, that's actually the only way that we've lost our pigeons. Uh, we've had raccoons come in and eat eggs and everything and leave the pigeons alone. We've had all kinds of predators come by and, uh, and not eat our pigeons. But the only thing that we've ever had issues with is hawks. And I actually have a video that I could show you guys where a hawk came down and almost swooped and got me whenever I was tending to the pigeons outside when we had the coop. So that was wild. Oh my gosh, oh, whoa. A hawk literally, holy crap. And one more thing I'll show you guys before you leave is that pigeons are incredibly intelligent animals. They are the only species of bird to be able to recognize themselves in a mirror, which is called passing the mirror test. much I am so overwhelmed <laughs> nobody's helping me <laughs> it's just me thanks Edithia <laughs> thanks for not helping <laughs> oh great oh oh boy where's more toilet paper <laughs> okay more toilet more toilet paper for the fans <laughs> oh we got 50 handles in our Studio apartment! <sighs> okay, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready for the shot. And you can just start here. Hey guys, so from all of us here at the Urban Rescue Ranch, thank you so much. We don't have any more toilet paper. <laughs> no more toilet paper at all. Please don't ask us for any more toilet paper. Uh, we love you. Please leave a like and a subscribe because, uh, because that helps us a lot. And, uh, and these is tough times that we's having here uh, over at the Urban Rescue Ranch because I can't get anyone to volunteer because most people are on lockdown. In fact, everyone in the city is on lockdown. So we love you guys. We appreciate any support you can give. And uh, we will see you on the next video. So please, uh, please leave the house so we can clean and, uh, and goodbye. Goodbye, oh, goodbye. <laughs> oh, goodbye, nope, <laughs> nope, uh, please leave. <laughs> goodbye. See you next week.